Welcome back to the Kimi Kato Show. We have Jeff Miyahara as our guest today. Uh, you, you were just listening to Asuga Kurunara by Juju, and you just came back in with Kimi Ni Aitaku Naru Kara by Kana Nishino. Thank so, you. Thank you for listening Ooh, to the song. A... I mean, thank you for playing. It reminds me of that. I think it was like over the, just around 2008, 2009. 2008, 2009, right? that's correct. It was just, you know, his music, Jeff's music was all over. <laughs> and, it, you know, when you, music has a, a strong power uh, where when you listen to a certain music, it takes you back to that time. Mm. And it reminds you of that moment that you were in, whether you were working, whether you were in a relationship, whatever you were doing, it was that moment in 2008, between 2008 and 2010, everything was Jeff's music. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's very nostalgic, but it's still, I think it's timeless. Yeah, thank you. It's still a great pop tune. That, and these artists are still big in Japan. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate Jeff coming in today and just playing that this song. It, re, it really reminds me of what I was doing uh, uh, at Univers. I was at Universal back then. I was running international. And, right. We we yeah, we yeah. shared many sessions together, and yes. especially one with one of the biggest stars in all yes, of Japan we as well. Yes, too. we did. Yeah, yeah, still one of the biggest stars. Yeah. 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 So uh, are she you... only did one song, didn't we? <laughs> that's it. Only one. Oh, two songs. Two songs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Kimmy, are you saying yes. that like the Jeff almost like you have the eighties music and the nineties grunge and the eighties, uh, you know, it type of music? You, when you say that, yes. you know exactly what kind of music it is, and it defined a generation. Are you saying that Jeff defined a yes. generation for you and Absolutely. for others? Yeah, yes, definitely. Well, obviously, I was you know much older. It it impacted young audience, you know, teenage audience and you know, late, early 20s female, especially mm. because, it, like he said, it was about, a, you know, it's like Jeff mentioned, it, he wrote a lot of love songs and it, they were very sentimental. It, you And most of his hit was about breaking up or what if I broke up with you or mm. what if tomorrow didn't come or, mm. you know, that kind of theme. So a lot of the girls... The female listeners, especially, were into his music, and most of the radio at that time played. It wasn't much about download; it was all about TV shows yeah. and radio. Mm. And if you walk down the streets, it, you listen to Jeff's music. Yeah. You switch on the TV; his music was a theme song for a drama TV drama series. Oh my God, you're uh, embarrassing me now. Or, or a TV commercial. Anyways, yes, like you just mentioned, it did define that moment between mid-2000 to mid-2010. Mm. Like, in the, uh, definitely that decade was about Jeff Miyahara. Thank you. You know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but you're absolutely right, you know. Uh, um, two things. So I really did have four songs in top 10 at that time. On, on just, it was one oh, day. We, oh my goodness. Look. Four songs in top 10 with different artists and different songs. So that was wild for me. That <laughs> that was like a really big accolade that I was, uh, oh, you know, I was able to achieve. It feels so good. Thank you. And then the second one also, um, yeah, all my songs were about bittersweet experiences, bittersweet love, unrequited love. Um, probably I experienced a lot of that growing up as well too. But also that's one of the reasons why I didn't do a lot of TV to be honest. And I didn't do a lot of radio. I never showed my face on a lot of this stuff. No one had any idea of what I looked like because like this right now, what you see right here is a lot different than what was in the expectations of a lot of these like young girls and, and everyone. And I was always, I was kind of scared to wear this. I was a, a, afraid to take away from the, you know, the real one-on-one, -on -one, one to one experience that the fans had listening to the artist by not bringing in this extra variable, which I'm okay with now, to be honest with you. But at the time I was just, I was hiding because I wasn't confident that I could represent what like people's expectations of what a romantic songwriter would look like, if you know what I mean. No, that's, I mean, you know, because I've known Jeff, I didn't, I never thought that you thought that way. I thought, I, that's why <laughs> I, I didn't do that many interviews. I didn't, you know, oh, I wasn't, amazing. I, you know, I was really careful with what I said. It was, I, I wrote a script for everything. I couldn't freestyle, even pictures. I was really careful with the image that I portrayed because I, it, maybe it's so Japanese of me, but I didn't want to put any extra, oh, what's okay. the word, mm -hmm. I didn't want to put any extra burden 
onto my artists by looking like me. You look great. Well, now yeah. I do. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Now we're, I'm going to jump in yeah. and we'll start the scorecard here. Handsome guy right there. <laughs> You're a handsome guy. <laughs> I, I'm sure you probably would have sold even more records. Uh, and, and, uh, singles. Thank but you, yeah, I kind of get it though, Jeff, like when you listen to a radio host before you see their image, you, you sure. kind of like imagine who they are in your head, right? You, you imagine. Absolutely. What they look like. Same when you read a good book. I mean, when you listen to a good song, I always try, when I interview uh, music artists, I try never to ask them to describe the song too much because mm -hmm. it, each the song means something different to each person that listens, right? Sure. Like, I don't know what Kimmy was going through, but if it was heart, heartbreak and breakup during that time, <laughs> Kimmy, it sounds like you got a story there. Um uh, uh, unrequited, no, was unrequited love. No, no, I was, I was actually already married. I was oh, okay. a ha you know, happily married guy. <laughs> yeah, but, don't get yourself you know, in trouble. You no, know, I was. Yeah. <laughs> but you know Will what? You add like, one you to my to... scorecard, please. Yeah. Okay. There we go. You, I, I, I got to count this up. But no, I, I get it, uh, Jeff. Not for the reasons that you, um, thought. You know, like your your image or whatever. But <clears throat> connect. You know, with the with the young fans listening connects you know with you um i i think it's good you got to almost let them sit there right and and be what they are to each person receiving them and it's better yeah. not to to give too much or to explain too much let them let them feel what they're feeling i i really don't think i had a lot of confidence i not i don't think i know for a fact i did not have a lot of confidence even in my first 10 years as a hit maker as people said you know just because uh I grew up in LA with Korean and Japanese parents and just, I was always just constantly confused for me. Music was just an outlet and I'm not going to say I wasn't ready for the stardom, but uh, I never realized what a huge impact I had on people. I always had, uh, you know, really a, a lack of confidence in, in myself, not only as a music producer and songwriter, but as a human being, of course, as well too. And so um all this entire journey and i hope that people do get a chance to listen to some of my music and, and if you do check me out on spotify and, and and the internet um but really all this entire journey has just been a reflection the growth of myself um and actually the music's all in chronological order so you get to check it all out but for me the music is more for me than it was for anyone else and now i can reflect and look at that and just really appreciate all the opportunities to be able to do this amazing have you had fans approach you and say that that they felt the way you did at that time and that you helped them gain confidence, you know, et cetera. I, I did. I do. And I still do have many that, that, you know, that come up to me. A lot of them actually turn into like songwriters because they said, Oh my God, you gave me a lot of courage and a lot of inspiration to follow my dreams as a songwriter. Um, Cause yeah, as, as, as Kimmy said earlier, um, it was, it was a blessing of all my songs were on the radio and I, I brought a new fresh, I think like an auditory kind of uh, um, experience to everyone because it, I did bring Japanese melodies, Japanese chord progressions and Japanese, I guess, like textures, visual textures into the music while also bringing in Western influences, kind of like what K-pop did with bringing in strong rhythm sections and like R&B hip hop kind of drums to this. And I think for a lot of people that was really orally exciting. Um, and of course, I do have like fans that said, oh, my God, how did you understand or what have you gone through in your life to understand what it feels like to be, for example, like like a widow? You know, that was a tough one. Um, or what did you go through to experience like the the, the loss of a loved one? Um, and I guess, you know, as I said earlier about experiencing everything every day, being a beginner at life every day, and it keeps you grounded, it keeps you humble. Um you have an appreciation not only for your life, but and I think that you develop an empathy for other people and ultimately yourself on a daily. Um, and when I do write music with my artists um, and we co-write and we get naked, not not literally, we get, you know, right here, we, we become naked emotionally and egotistically when we write the music. We really are wearing that, that story, you know, fully embodying that. Um, I just don't think, you know, music is out there to to pretend anything. At least, you know, I always saw music to be genuine and authentic. And I'm so glad that so many people felt that way. Thanks for letting me rant. Oh, no, that was amazing. I, I love hearing this because it. I think what you just mentioned 
definitely inspires a lot of young artists who are in 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 a in a situation where do I want to show myself? Do I want to expose everything that I feel and not and and but I've been pretending, you know, like mm -hmm. some people pretend and they pretend because they they feel that they don't feel confident right. about showing everything. But at the end of the day, when when you get down to the real nitty gritty, yeah. and that is when pure music is born. I think absolutely is born. and You're absolutely right. And you always when you go into the studio with an artist, I think you spend that time when you you know it's usually you start off with well, how do you do? You know, like, I don't do that. <laughs> at all the first thing that i do is i say hi i'm silly and i'm yeah. ridiculous and yeah I'm, I'm not gonna be like the smartest or the hottest guy in the room um i love you thanks yeah. for coming to the studio yeah. thanks for for writing and then for me i'll just get naked first yeah right and, and then when passed. i'm vulnerable they yeah. become vulnerable and then we can really just start talking and communicating heart to heart yeah and not a cliche literally heart to heart and when you're starting to communicate heart to heart you know, your, your DNA is alive, your body's alive, intellect is alive. And I really believe that we have, you know, super, you know, I'm Japanese and very spiritual as well. So I really believe that we've got a lot of people and a lot of uh, energies and spirits that are looking out for us as well, too. We become alive to channel and to project. We become alive and music is frequency. Love is frequency. People are frequency. And every single thing that we create is just an embodiment of that. Amazing. Yeah. Now that you mentioned heart to heart, I would love to hear your work with Chris Hart. Thank you. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, you know, so uh, when I was introducing Jeff at the beginning, he, he, Chris Hart is a, is a, an American singer, but he, because he loved Japanese culture so much, he moved to Japan and became a superstar. I mean, how, who does that? Who right? does that? And he started off as, as mending vending machines. How did you meet Chris? Honestly, the same way that everyone else met Chris Hart. We saw him on YouTube and I saw him on TV once and I just immediately fell in love. And I said, oh my God, I got to get in touch with this guy right now. And I had sent out probably seven emails to Twitter, to, I don't think Instagram was there at the time, Facebook, uh, MySpace, um, every single, YouTube, every single channel that I could reach out to him. I said, hey, Chris, you got you to gotta call me right now. Call me right now. Here's my email. Call me. I'm, I'm staying up 24 hours. Just let me know that you got this email. Call me. And I was so lucky because within three hours, he had called me. I mean, he would have been surprised. I think he was mo most surprised, like the top... J-pop songwriter, yeah. suddenly contacting my him, yeah, like yourself. Well, well, thanks for that. Yeah, I mean that must have been ecstatic. It, well, I, I I don't think he for had him, any though. type of like expectations, but I said, call me, call me, call me. And so we talked on the phone for five minutes. I said, Chris, you are brilliant, you're fantastic. I love everything that you do and everything that you represent. I have a session tomorrow at one p.m. But I need to see you before then. You, I, I, whatever you're doing, please drop everything you're doing. Can you see me at tomorrow at 11 a.m.? Because I want to talk to you for an hour. Let's just have a little coffee. And Amazing. we had met at this restaurant. It was called Zest on Mishku. It's no longer right. there. But uh, I got, remember that restaurant. Yeah, I got there a little early. We were there like 10 minutes early because he's also Chris Hart is also very respectful for time. So we're there 10 minutes early, Japanese stuff. And we get there, and it's I think it's like it's still winter, and it's cold outside. And we're waiting outside. They won't let us in the restaurant because it, we're 10 minutes early. Japanese like to open on time. So we're sitting outside kind of shivering. Um, but the one of the people, uh, service staff that was there, recognized that we're cold. And she she came out and she brought us uh, two of these blankets. So we kind of like kept warm. So we're talking. And I said, where are you from? Where, you know, what have you been doing? You know, what's been your inspiration for life? I love what you're doing. What are you, here, what are you doing in Japan right now? 10 minutes are up like that. And... Then the, the restaurant opens and the people say, hey, uh, please come on in. The, the restaurant's open. You're welcome inside. So I, I had just taken my blanket that I was covering myself with and I just kind of crumpled it up and like I threw it on my chair. And then I walk into the door and I look back because Chris isn't following me. And I look back and I notice that Chris is not, he has not only folded his blanket really beautifully, but he has now gotten my blanket that I was using, folded that, and is now grabbing the two blankets and walking into the restaurant with both of them. And it was, it was at that moment that I said, Chris, I've had a pretty good streak so far. I've got a lot of credibility with all the labels and all the management companies. I've got a little cash. I'm going to bet everything on you. It was at that moment that I said, I'm going to do everything for this guy. 
Oh my goodness. It's a crazy story, that, right? No, that, but I love it. Yeah. It wasn't just music, it, right? It, it was his, literally, it was, he embodied everything that I felt represents the Japanese aesthetic and Japanese beauty. But he's, he's completely American. He's completely American. So American. But, yeah. uh, you know, maybe it's a past life. Maybe it was a calling. But I really do believe that everything in life is perfect. And I do believe that nothing happens by accident. I, I do believe that, you know, there are an unlimited amount of streets and, and alleys that we can go. But Chris decided to follow his calling to go to Japan to not only pursue a, a career in singing, but also wake up and enlighten millions of people that fell in love with his music. I think the lesson here is fold your blanket. <laughs> I, you get one point for that one. That is an I mean, incredible I, I, story. Incredible story. But I think, but this is what's what's really important about this story. I think is that it's it's everything that you. It's not just music, but your what what you believe in is what you create. Yeah, and Jeff saw what was chris about yes. it was it was just it wasn't just about his voice yes he has great voice he's a great singer but what makes him even better is who he is yeah right and what he represents oh, man. to not just the human race but also to the japanese you know i think he really reminded a lot of people that oh my god you know the japanese values you know to be humble to be respectful mm. um to be empathetic and sympathetic, um, to express your emotions and don't forget to say thank you and I love you and and I'm sorry, you know. Chris did an amazing job. And he also helped people remember because Chris also did a lot of cover songs, of mm, famous songs yes. as well too, mm -hmm. of why these songs impacted these people at that time on such a magnificent scale. And he really revived a lot of this music as well too. Well, why don't we play Chris's Let's song? Let's do it. Can you introduce the next song? Yeah, okay. So Chris has a lot of cover songs, but this one is his uh, original song. I feel really blessed to be a part of this. Um, and I hope you guys love it too. Uh, Chris Hart with I Love You. 